Hey everyone, and welcome to this review note. In this clip, we are going to be looking at adding networks into the OSPF process. I've got all four of my routers configured up such that uh, OSPF is enabled. They all have their uh, router ID set and that type of thing, but they don't have any networks configured yet, so they don't have anything to advertise. So that's our next thing. I'm going to go into router one. And first thing I'll take a look at is what networks I have in my routing table. The reason I'm doing that is normally what we do is advertise out the networks that we know about that we want to transmit data. I've got two of those. I've got the 10.100.1.0 network. I've also got the 192 and 68.88.0 network. We've got this one down here that is the loopback that we have the router ID on, but I don't want to advertise that out because I don't want anybody communicating with that. So what we're going to do is go into that configuration. This is where I said before, it's nice to know what your PID is all the time. This command for that is router OSPF and then the PID. So if I didn't use the same one all the time, I just kind of randomly pick something when I set the router up, I have to go and find out what that is. Pretty easy to do though, let's go into that. And then I'm gonna add in the two networks that I know about on this router. The way I do that is network, uh, the network ID. And then I do a wildcard, whereby any bit in the wildcard that's zero has to match, and any bit in the wildcard that's a one doesn't really matter. So my network is 10.100.1.0. Think of it as my classful subnet, or sorry, my network address or subnet address, and flip it. Subnet mask and flip it. So trip, uh, typically with slash 24, it'd be triple 255.0. In this case, it's triple 0.255. And then I have to specify the area. So area is going to be zero in this case. And then I'll do my other network, which is the 192.168.88.0. That's also going to be area zero. This router is now advertising these networks out to other routers. Switch over on to router two. Okay. Router two hasn't really done anything yet because it's also not advertising networks. I'm gonna configure that on this guy. And as soon as we do that, what we're gonna see is these routers are gonna form adjacencies. In this case, my two networks are 10.100.1.0 again, and I do have to include that, uh, even though we already know it from one of the other routers, but I do have to include that in the list. And then in this case, 192.168.22.0, and both of those are 24-bit. So there's my first network into area zero. And there's my second uh, network in area zero. Now you'll notice I didn't even get to that. And there's already a message coming up here that says that it's formed an adjacency. And that's going to be with R1. So I'm going to pop back over here onto R1. Here's the message saying that I've formed an adjacency with router two. As soon as you start advertising one network, then the router is going to go out and try and form some adjacencies. Well, let's see what effect that that's had. If I show the routing table now on R1, I see those connected networks. And this guy right here is from OSPF. That's the O over in the left-hand column. I now know about 192.168.22.0. If I go through and configure the router two and router, or sorry, router three and router four, 
I'm going to get adjacencies between everything. And I'll leave that to you to do because it's as simple as doing the same thing as router one and router two. We'll come back in another video and take a look at the results of that. So wrap for the video. Hopefully this has been helpful for you and we'll see you next time.